Storybook Matinee audience, Mrs. Seide here, and I'm in historical downtown Waxhaw today on this lovely old bridge looking for just the right spot to read my story to you today. And at the end of the story, I have a really great surprise. Miss Holly of the Jolly Lollies and her lovely daughter Charlie are going to sing the song for you. I think I found the perfect spot to read. Come on, it's a beautiful little garden. Our story today is Me, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. It's an old classic. Let's begin. Me, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Oh, that's a pretty country setting. I always like windmills. Me, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, the wonderful magical car. Adapted by Al Perkins, from the screenplay based on the Ian Fleming story, illustrated by John Hanna. This says Coggins Garage, Motor Repairs. Every day after school, Jeremy and Jemima Potts ran down the road to Mr. Coggins Garage. Their friend, Mr. Coggins, let them play in an old automobile behind his garage. This automobile had once been a famous racing car, but now, it was just an old wreck, all rusty and covered with weeds. Its steering wheel was broken. Its tires were in shreds. Jeremy and Jemima didn't care. Oh, they loved the old car. Every afternoon, they pretended to drive it all over the world. Geez, that'd be fun. One day, Jeremy and Jemima saw a strange man at the garage. He was offering Mr. Coggins some money. Who is that? asked Jemima. Oh, it's the junk man, said Jeremy. I'm afraid he wants to buy our car from Mr. Coggins. You're not going to let him take our wonderful car away, are you, Mr. Coggins? asked Jemima. I'm afraid I must, said Mr. Coggins sadly. I need the money. Just a minute, cried Jemima. I have a splendid idea. We'll buy this car ourselves. We have our allowances and our lunch money. We can pay you two dollars. That's fine with me, said Mr. Coggins, and I'll give you a dollar to tow the car home, Jeremy said to the junk man. All right, said the junk man. Jump in. Giddy up, said the junk man to his horse. As he gave a tug at the reins, the old horse pulled the old car out into the road. I don't see why you want an old wreck like this, said the junk man. Our father has a workshop in the barn, Jeremy explained. He can fix anything. He'll fix this car just like new, said Jemima. Luck, instead of a tow truck, they have a tow horse. <clears throat> when they got home, the children pushed the car into their father's workshop. Look what we bought, father, Jeremy exclaimed. She'll be a wonderful car after you fix her, said Jemima. Hmm, Mr. Potts looked the old car over very carefully. She's in rather bad shape, he said, but I'll try to repair her. Mr. Potts got out all his hammers and wrenches and saws and pliers. Then he took some iron from an old stove and upholstery from an old sofa. Upholstery is the fabric from the sofa. He worked on the car all night long. The children could hear him banging and hammering, and in the morning, Mr. Potts called to the children. Come and see your old car now. I'm excited to see what it looks like. <gasps> Close your eyes. Are they closed? Okay. Open. Look at that car. Jeremy and Jemima ran into the workshop. The old car looked brand new. Mr. Potts had given her a coat of shiny paint. He had polished the windshield and the wheels. He had even put on new headlights and new tires. And he had built a big new engine. She's beautiful, said Jemima. Can we go for a ride, Daddy, asked Jeremy. Anywhere you'd like, said Mr. Potts. Jump in. I'll bring my umbrella in case it rains, said Jemima. Mr. Potts pressed the button, the starter button, and the big engine shook, and it shivered, and it <coughs> coughed, and made a strange sound. It sounded like chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Listen to that, said Jemima. That's what we'll call our car. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Look, he has on goggles to protect his eyes from oh, the wind and bugs while he's driving. And that 
is the trunk. Different from cars of today. With a roar and a bang, chitty chitty bang bang, rushed onto the highway. Let's go to the seashore, shouted Jeremy. We can have a picnic. While they were zooming along, they saw a lady walking down the road. Hey, it's that nice lady, truly scrumptious, said Jemima. Let's take her with us. Mr. Potts stopped the car. We're going for a ride, Miss Scrumptious, he said. Won't you join us? Oh, I'd love to, Truly answered. She climbed into the car with Mr. Potts and the children, and they headed for the beach. But suddenly, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang swerved off the road. She bounced across a field. I, I, I can't control her, Mr. Potts shouted. She's steering herself. Uh-oh. Jemima and Truly Scrumptious screamed with fright. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was headed straight for the top of a high cliff. She skidded along the edge of the rocky cliff. Then she started falling straight down, down, down towards the ocean and the jagged rocks far below. Look out, shouted Mr. Potts. We're going to crash. Mr. Potts pulled at the steering wheel. He tugged at all the knobs and switches and levers on the dashboard. Suddenly, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang stopped falling. The engine made a strange grinding sound. The four wheels pulled themselves into the car out of sight. Thin like strips of metal came out in their place. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was turning into a boat. Oh, I wish my car did that. She leveled off and landed gently on the ocean. We're saved, shouted Jeremy. It's magic, said Jemima. This must be a magical car. They sailed past a big yacht with black funnels and a purple flag. It belonged to Baron Bomberst, the wicked ruler of the kingdom of Bulgaria, a big fat man with a bristling mustache. The Baron was watching Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Did you see that? shouted Baron Bomberst. An automobile that can fall off a cliff and then make itself into a boat. I want that car, I want that car for myself. All hands on deck, he ordered. After that boat car, men. Ooh, he doesn't seem like a very friendly fellow. The Baron's pilot steered straight at Chitty. Help, cried Jeremy. We'll all be killed. Then the steering wheel began to twist again in Mr. Potts's hands. Again, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang made a strange grinding sound. Her boat fins disappeared, and a kind of metal wing came out on each side. There was a propeller on the top of each wing and another propeller at the rear of the car. Look, there are the propellers. They look like giant hula hoops. As the propellers began turning, Chitty took off from the ocean and sailed up into the sky out of sight. Just look at that! Baron Bomber shouted, Now the car's an airplane! He shouted into his radio telephone, Is this the airport? Send me my big Zeppelin balloon right away. We've got to catch a flying car. He really wants that car. Meanwhile, Jeremy, Jemima, truly scrumptious, and Mr. Potts were happily flying along in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, way up high in the clouds. It's getting foggy, said Jeremy. I hope it doesn't rain, said Jemima, and reached for her umbrella. Just then, Baron Bomber's big Zeppelin balloon appeared out of the clouds right in front of them. It headed straight for Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. The Baron threw out a big hook on the end of a rope. You won't get away from me this time, he threatened. But Chitty Chitty Bang Bang twisted away from the Baron's big hook. She flew to the back end of the balloon. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. She's trying to tell us something, said Jemima. I think I know what it is, said Jeremy. Quick, Jemima, give me your umbrella. And Daddy, hold on to my belt. Jeremy leaned far out of the seat. He reached as far as he could, and he pointed the umbrella at the balloon and jabbed with a sharp point. On the first jab, nothing happened. Then he jabbed again and punched a hole in the top of the balloon. There was a great hissing sound. The gas inside of the Zeppelin escaped through the hole. The balloon got smaller and smaller. Then it collapsed and fell down toward a lake below them. Good for you, Jeremy, said Truly Scrumptious. You certainly showed them. 
It was nothing, said Jeremy modestly. Besides, it was Jemima who brought the umbrella. Help me, help me, <laughs> shouted the Baron as the wreckage from his zeppelin struck the water. You've got to help me, he called to the passengers in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, circling overhead. If you don't help me, how will I ever get back to Bulgaria? You'll have to swim, Mr. Potts called down to the Baron. And maybe that'll teach you not to go around trying to steal automobiles. Especially magic automobiles like ours, said Jemima. Then Chitty Chitty Bang Bang turned around and flew home. After circling low over the village where Truly Scrumptious and the Potts family lived, she landed on the village green and turned into a car once more. The villagers gathered to welcome Jeremy and Jemima and Truly and Mr. Potts. The children were happy to be home and safe again, and it was especially nice to know that Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, their wonderful, magical car, would always be ready to ride or sail or fly away again and take them into a wonderful world of new and exciting adventures. Great story, great adventure. The end. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is not only a story, it's also a song and it's a movie. Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, oh you pretty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, we love you. In, in, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, what we'll do near, far, in our motor car, oh what a happy time we'll spend. Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, our fine four-fender friend. Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, our fine four friend, your friend Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Oh, you pretty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, we love you. And in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, what we'll do near, far, in our motor car. Oh, what a happy time we'll spend. Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, our fine four fender friend. Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, 